Hi everyone, welcome to The Last Drop, I am Chris. Uh, yeah, different video today for you. Um, I decided to do a monthly video of my whiskey journey. Probably should have started this last year because that was one hell of a year, 2019. Um, but in fact, we are starting off in December last year. Um, so that's going to be cool. Um, I've been keeping a log little log book. I, I, I got this a little Ben Romack book. Um, so it's, you know, whiskey related. Um, but I've decided not really to do whiskey reviews as such too much now. Only if it really, really too, um, is really, really good and I really want to highlight it to people. Oh, that's probably when I will. Uh, I might do more bourbons um, because I think they, yeah, love wise in the UK, they're not as, as big. Um, so yeah, this is my diary, uh, or a little, just a little logbook of um, my journey of whiskey um, in December at the moment. Uh, still writing in January, so every time I have one, I'm writing it down, seeing what my reaction is, uh, and then yeah, just going to tell you what if I, if there's any particular flavours that I thought of, um, they'll be down in this book. So let's get started, shall we? Uh, ooh, let's roll roll back the clock. Uh, so, I started on the 3rd of December, basically. This is when I started it. So, I had an Eagle Rare 10-year-old, uh, and I wrote here, uh, it was Amped Up Buffalo Trace, which it is really, isn't it? Uh, it's still on the shelf over there somewhere. Over there. Um, yeah, vanilla, wood spice, uh, it's at 45%. It's a pretty nice long finish uh, and a bit drying. So with that age, um, get that drying note. So that was cool. Uh, then on the fifth, uh, I had McMira. So I got a couple of samples from uh, Somerton Whiskey Club, uh, and uh, it was to do a video on the release date. So I think the release date was on the Friday, uh, and I filmed on the on the 5th, which I think was a Wednesday or a Tuesday. Probably, yeah, one of them, anyway. Um, and yeah, uh, Lava and Winter Soul. So film them both. Uh, you can check out the videos um, to see what my notes are on them. <laughs> uh, oh, then on the 5th, um, I had this. Kill Karen, Car Strength. Eight year old, uh, and I'd, I'd have it previously. I think I might have mentioned it in something else, um, but I just put wow, still wow. And in fact, this is what's in my glass now. So, I mean, you see that color, we've all seen it on other videos, uh, and everybody's banging on about it. But it is such a fabulous drink. I mean, mine's been open, yeah, quite a while now. Um, so in yeah, and I haven't actually had any this year, 2020. Mm. It's such a big hitting sherry loveliness. But yeah, the, a bit of a bit of smoke in there. Oh, oh it's so good. Um. I might nick Scotch Test Dummies and say this might be a, the UK bottle of wow. Scotch bottle of wow. Yeah, comment down below. Uh, then on the 7th, so we skipping on now, uh, I tried Balcones um, Rye. So Balcones Texas Distillery. Uh, I got this sample from Alan the Whiskey Friend. Uh, and it's very different to all the ryes I've tried before, and I've written down here, not sure if I like it. And you know what? I'm not still not sure if I like it. I mean, it's a good sample. Alan gave me a really very good, nice, generous sample of it, um, and I tried it on two occasions, and both times, yeah, wasn't too too sure. So, hmm. An interesting one, and I do like my rice and I like the spice note, but they were certainly different than whatever. So, 
Uh, then skipping to the eighth, I drink pretty much every day. By the looks of it, doesn't it? <laughs> um, we've got uh, the leftovers of the McMira lava, um, which I put nice and smoky uh, with a nice fruity nose. So that's cool. Uh, and the Vinter Sol, uh, very enjoyable, nice ABV, and the port was going on. So that was good. Nice bit of port action in that Vinter Sol. Um, then on the ninth, <laughs> so seven eighth month, three days in a row. Let's just quickly skip the head. Yes, so I drank on the tenth as well. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, on the ninth, ninth was an interesting day. So uh, I had another sample of ECBP, so Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, uh, which was kindly gifted me by Luna Aaron. Now, thank you very much, Luna. Um, Again, only a little sample. Well, not quite a generous sample again. Uh, and I, my dad, um, I think my dad had my son for, or my mum and dad had my son for the day, so they bring him back. Uh, and I made him have a sample of uh, ECBP. Uh, and yeah, his, his, he'd never had anything like it before. Uh, he's tried a few bourbons that I've given him, nothing like that ABV. Uh, and literally, just gobsmacked at the flavour and it was brilliant to see his reaction I love that um, reaction that people see you know um, really really cool really cool and um, I also gave him which was uh, another sample from um, Toby from Whiskey Shared uh, I gave him a, um, a sample, uh, little snifter of Jack Daniel's single barrel barrel proof Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof. What would that be, Jack? J D S B B P. That's an acronym for you. Um, and yeah, again, he was surprised. One, he was surprised it was Jack. It, I when I tasted it, I had a little um, sip as well, and it is surprisingly a lot smoother than E C B P. So that was very interesting. But again, very good. But he definitely preferred the E C B P above. Um, above the jack. So then, oh, wee, skipping on to the tenth, fourth day in a row drinking. Oh dear, it's not good. It was December. Come on, it's Christmas. Um, Henry McKenna, ten-year-old, the best in the world. It was last year, wasn't it? I think, or the year before. I think it was voted at um, San Francisco or wherever it is. Um, again, gifted. Um, I think it was hey, it was Alan from the whiskey friend who sent it to me. Uh, pleasure in sharing, obviously. Uh, yeah, I, it was very nice. A um, bit more complex um, than your regular bourbons, definitely. Um, and then, yeah, definitely a step higher um, bourbon profile wise than your, your Buffalo Trace, your um, Old Forester, things like that. The regular stuff that I drink. Yeah, very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Uh, so that must have been, yeah, 10th. 10th was a Tuesday because the next day I drank was on the 12th and that was a V-Pub night. Um, so this is Roy's fault for this entry. Um, yeah, definitely Roy's fault. Yeah. There's, wow, two, uh, about two pages worth of <laughs> Tasting notes on this day. Um, so I had, I started off with the Dalwin, um, which is a Caden has um, bottling that I've got, um, which you've probably seen in my um, video about uh, my collection that I have at the moment. Um, yeah, lemon on the nose, uh, not had it for a while actually, I wrote on here that two, three months maybe. Um, nice tropical taste, and it's definitely developed since I'd last tasted it, or my palate had developed, one of the two, um, but really, really nice. Uh, and I've put on there, I had three of them. <laughs> so I did three drams of that, um, which is pretty cool. And I think it was a sherry night, well, it was a, I think it might have been the night that Roy um, cracked the Kilkerrans, or at least the Kilkerran 8. I'm going to say Roy, Roy from McBoy beat though. Um, so after that I popped open the 
my Hazel Burn 14, um, which is Oloroso finish, um, which just got crazy amount of wood. Now, um, it's been open a good six months to eight months, and it's one of those that has really, really come alive. Brilliant, brilliant whiskey, lovely. Um, yeah, it reminds me of being, yeah, it would, I think the previous month or the month before, um, we took my son down to uh, the Victory down in Portsmouth, uh, and it it reminded me of me just the memory hit with that smell um, of me being um, the old broken leather uh, on the Victory um, down in Portsmouth, and it just brilliant. Um, def less sherry influence on it, I thought, um, but more leather like grunt, you know, just a absolutely lovely dram, absolutely lovely. Uh, I followed that up with um, <laughs> uh, no, a little dram of uh, Caden Head's 20 year old Sherry Blend. Uh, again, super stuff, just wonderfully deep um, wood, sherry, long dried, fruity finish. Lovely, absolutely lovely stuff. Uh, and then. Oh, and then um, I think, yeah, and then I finally finished it off with the uh, Kilkerra and Car Strength of that evening. That was a long, long old sesh. That was a proper flight, wasn't it? That was good. 12th of the 12th. Brilliant day. Hmm. So, then on the 13th was my works night out. <laughs> uh, so that, oh, that was a heavy night. Very heavy. Oh, dear. Um, so yeah, I had a I had a Jameson's in in the pub of of the evening. So we went out for our meal. Um, then we went to another place uh, and then found that it was like five deep at the bar. Uh, then one, one of my other colleagues said, "Oh yeah, we we'll go down to this place down the road." Yeah, okay. Absolutely dead. Nobody in there at all. I, I couldn't believe it. Just like, ridiculous that nobody was there. On like the week before Christmas or two weeks before Christmas on like a Friday night very bizarre but yeah it, it was good because we just went went in there got straight to the bar uh, all their drinks were good and we ended up doing like Jaeger bombs and tequila shots and oh that, what a that was a night uh, and then yeah then I had Jameson's uh, and then I sort of started to look at the bar and um <clears throat> Yeah, randomly. I mean, this is there's not a, like a trendy whiskey bar or anything like that. Um, they had Springbank Ten and a Compass Box Hedonism in there. I was like, that's the weirdest, most random place that you could have found those two drinks or those two bottles. It was bizarre. And then apparently, talking to the guy at the bar, and he was like, oh yeah, the boss came down from London, and he was yeah, he really into his whiskey and stuff like that. So. I'm not going to argue, so I had a Spring Bang 10, which was very nice indeed. Don't really remember a lot about it, because obviously I'd had a lot of drink by then, so that was cool. Then I gave it a nice little break. Five days. No, oh, 19th. No, 18th. So I had a good 13th to the 18th, that was good. Uh, where was I? I was on another works night out. <laughs> that was on a Wednesday, yeah. I remember now. Um, and I had a Tomatin Legacy, which I think is quite pleasing to everybody. I had had a lot of wine as well before that, and I just thought, meh, it was alright. It wasn't unpleasant, and it wasn't brilliant. I just, meh, meh. Yeah, I, I, if it's there, you can have one. Um... Then, whoa, whoo, the 19th, this is a long old month, hopefully like January, February, March, when I do them, it won't be as long as this, but December's always going to be that one drinking month, isn't it, really, well, depending on where we go, what I do, meh. So 19th, uh, I went to see the Amber Light film, um, which is the Dave Broom movie, um, which done with uh, Adam Park directed, um, just a nice little piece on uh, the state of the Scotch whisky and how it's involved and, and its role in 
Scottish history and stuff like that. And it was really, really interesting, stilling and out in the wilderness, and some great scenery and some great shots of, of Scotland and stuff like that. Uh, and it was interesting. So they, in part of that, they at the end they had a Q and A. Dave Broom was actually there because he's a resident of Brighton, uh, although I've never seen him around. But um, yeah, that was cool to meet him afterwards um, in the pub. Um, but yeah, on the thing they gave us a, a Tamasca Ten, which they watered down quite a lot. So it was a bit odd, I thought, a bit strange. Uh, and then they gave us a, a Lager 16, so a Lager Villain 16, which was just a lovely, yeah, you know, Lager, Lager Villain 16, and it's, it's, it's a good drink. And I just put yummy. So that was good. We ended up, I ended up in the pub um, with pretty much most of the Brighton Whiskey Society, which I thought had closed down. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant. Met Tath Adams and, you know, uh, really, really good. Uh, so, yeah, 19th. So, then we get to uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day. Uh, so, well, I didn't drink Boxing Day because I had to drive, but um, basically I just had a bunch of old fashions uh, over Christmas Eve and, and Christmas Day. Um, and we found that Lefroig select in an old-fashioned was the best one that we tried really really nice can't argue with that uh 27th so uh, obviously christmas presents got opened and um yeah i got a boutique rye which was an 11 month old from 921 in colorado distillery um so yeah just cracked it open just to you know start the air process going and stuff like that uh, very interesting. Definitely a rye. If you remember the balconers I mentioned earlier, much more of a rye that I remember. Lovely spicy notes. Uh, really good. Uh, also tried the old f my uh, first bottle of Old Forester, which I think you again may have seen in my other video. Uh, yeah, lovely sweetness on that. Uh, then what do we do? Skip to the 30th of the 12th, uh, I had uh, some Springbank samples, um, which were again kindly sent to me by Luna Aaron. Um, thank you very much Luna. So I had the car strength, the latest car strength. Um, it was nice, uh, but I think I need a bottle of it. Who doesn't need a bottle of it? But I think I need a bottle of it. I think one of these things with samples is I don't think they're sometimes fair on a whiskey, you know? And it, it I think, uh, coin a phrase, I think uh, Roy says it best, um, a sample is a date, and a, yeah, and a, a bottle is a marriage, or something along those lines. You know what I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was good. It was a very, very nice whiskey. Uh, I've only, like, half the bottles, I've still got half the bottles left, um, the samples left, so, at a later date, we'll see if they've helped, or my palate's helped. Um, yeah, and I tried the local barley as well. Uh, this one had a good load of funk in it. Great load of funk in that one. Uh, and my wife as well could even tell that it, there was something not... That was something different with it. And it was that funkiness, I think. Um, very enjoyable sample and reminded me a lot of Glen Scotia. Mmm. Now, same area, so maybe. But that Campbelltown funk, very, very good. And that was that. Apparently, I didn't drink anything Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve. Um, I probably did, but I didn't write it down. Never mind. <laughs> well, there we go. That was my journey uh, of whiskey um, I had in December of 2019. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I will be doing this every month. Um, but yeah, please hit that subscribe button bell notification, all that sort of stuff, all that jazz, thumbs up, likes, things, you know, you know what to do on YouTube. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining me. I um, hope that was in, of an interest to you. Um, again, yeah, please comment down below if, if that's okay. Um, if you'd like to see more of these, um, that'd be good. Um, I'm hoping it did. it's a bit different. I think you get more of a reaction. Um, sort of type video rather than me blabbering on about 
tasting notes and how this killed Karen sherry is bloody fantastic. Um, which it is though. I mean, come on. Mm. That was the last drop.